Welcome back to Every Man Prepping. And it looks like the Ukrainians are changing up their tactics a little bit. You know, they've been in this counteroffensive against Russia. They haven't made a lot of headway. You know, they've been hitting a very well-built, well-fortified defenses uh, by the Russians. They don't have a lot of air support to help them out. So it's kind of stalling out a little bit. So they've gone after a lot of drone attacks. You know, they hit the uh, Kerch Bridge again. They've been flying drones into uh, Moscow, deep into Moscow, hitting buildings. And now we have drones, surface drones, sea drones, going after uh, commercial vessels, tankers. And so uh, Ukraine recently, the other night, hit a tank, a you know, Russian tanker ship, you know, used for carrying oil or fuel around that. And they hit it in the Black Sea near the Kursk Bridge. So this is a another phase of the war going into. We're no longer after straight military targets. It's kind of a military target because uh, if it is supplying, you know, Russian troops with fuel and oil, it's in a supply line, you know, supply lines are, you know, fair targets in war. But the big thing about this, the next, you know, upping the ante here is the ecological, the environmental effects is if you do sink one of those tankers full of oil in the Black Sea, uh, what are the consequences of that? So let's talk about, you know, what Ukraine is doing, what did they do, uh, like I said, the consequences, and how Russia might react to this new phase going in. So let's start checking this out here. We got a story out of the Zero Hedge really quick here. And it says, Russian tanker hit by Ukrainian sea drones, likely will, with help from U.S. intelligence. We'll get into that a little bit. Uh, the more the U.S. helps, the more likely Russia is to retaliate straight uh, against the United States. Kind of amazing they haven't done that yet. I, I don't know why we haven't seen some U.S. asset, uh, U.S. ship, U.S. something attacked by the Russian jet. Uh, if you ask me, they're holding great restraint and not doing so, but, you know, they haven't yet, but the more the U.S. does this, you're going to see, you know, how they probably use the intelligence, um, you know, to help the Ukrainians identify which ship to hit. How do you know which tanker ship to hit, which one you want to hit? I think they had help. The more the U.S. does that, the more the Russia is going to look at them and finally, you know, pull that trigger to do something against them. Well, let's go on here. And as we do this, please like uh, the, the video. You know, share it with your friends and family, you know, hit a comment or two, a question, uh, anything out there really helps out the algorithm, and subscribe to the channel. So what do we got here? It says, Ukrainian drones reportedly scored a direct hit on a Russian tanker in the Kerch Strait, uh, which is right next to the Kerch Bridge, the Crimea Bridge, where they attacked with a drone a little earlier, and they're still repairing it. And there's some video of it, I mean, a, a, a picture of it. We'll go to a video of it in a minute so you can see what the drone did. You know, it's provided by the Ukrainian uh, special forces, but um, you know, we'll take it from the word that's the actual video of the hit. It was a chemical tanker named the SIG, the SIG, whatever you want to call it. They didn't sink it, it's floating. I don't think it leaked anything, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute why that's going to be a huge problem if something like that does happen. But it says the SIG or the SIG has, has previously um, come under Washington sanctions, meaning Washington DC sanctions, for transporting jet fuel to Russian forces in Syria. This strongly suggests the U.S. intelligence assisted the Ukrainians in targeting information. Yes. So, um, you know, how do the Ukrainians pick which one? Well, maybe the United States says, hey, this tanker has been supplying fuel into Syria. And in Syria, you know, the Russian planes have been messing with our drones and doing other things. So why don't we take out their tanker? Let's send a message. That's probably what happened. And it's probably not going to go over too well with the Russians, as you'll see here in a little bit. Let's go down to the video. Here's the first one. I'm just going to page through. I'm going to go through it manually here. So you can see this supposedly this is where it took off from. It's right next to another vessel. I don't know if it was launched from this vessel. It was hiding alongside of it. I find that quite interesting. That's so close to another vessel. And I don't know if it wasn't shot on or, or what. But as you can see, then it turns. You know, it's starting. It's finding the target. It's going down. And then, if, you know, here's the target. It finds the target it wants to get into. And it starts, you know, accelerating and then finally goes into it. It looks like it's aiming for the middle. I think they're hoping to hit a, a the where the oil is stored or the fuel is stored and, and, you know, possibly sink it or cause an explosion. Um, it caught on fire. Hit the, no one died. And as you can see here, it goes dark because it finally hits. And then, the, the you know, the, uh, Rush, or the Ukrainian Special Forces came back and said, if the Russians want the explosions to stop, they should... Use the, only, use the only option for this, which is to leave the territorial waters of Ukraine. They said they're in a war. Makes sense, but Russia is obviously going to not like this too much, as we see in this next article here. This is from Reuters, talking about uh, Dmitry Medvedev and what he responded with. You know, he's the one that 
about every week or so, he's telling you, let's go to nuclear war. We're going to do this. He's very flamboyant, uh, doesn't hold anything back. But what he is saying here is former uh, Russian president Dmitry Medvedev on Saturday suggested Moscow would launch more strikes against the Ukrainian ports in response to Kiev's attacks on Russian ships in the Black Sea. And then he threatened to hand Ukrainian an ecological catastrophe. Why would they be doing that? Well, if let's say uh, Ukrainians did sink an, an oil ship and all that oil leaks into the Black Sea, which is what Russia uses for fishing, transport, and wash up on the Russian shores, uh, the cleanup, it, it would be an ecological disaster for Russia. So I think they're threatening it back. So Ukraine's playing a dangerous game here, uh, not only for uh, involving the United States, not only, you know, escalating the war, but, you know, for the environment, uh, you know, all that oil going to wash the fisheries, the birds, the animals, all that junk. But, you know, things happen in war, but, um, you know, when you start polluting and damaging another country by doing this, they're not going to take to it too kindly. And going down, you'll see what he says. Medvedev suggests retaliatory Russian strikes against Ukraine for its sea drone attacks that could in any chance of reviving the grain deal. This is a quote, and it came out on his Telegram channel. They took it out from there. I was reading this on his Telegram channel. But it said here, quote, If the Kiev scum want to create an ecological disaster in the Black Sea, they should get one on the part of the territory that will soon fall to Poland. I'm talking about uh, Western Ukraine. They think Poland's going to take it over. So he's saying they should get one there. Okay, let me continue. Uh, they should, uh, so part of the territory that would soon fall to Poland, that will stink for centuries after that, unquote. So what does it mean by stink for centuries after that? There's only one thing that lasts for centuries, if you ask me, and that's radiation. Uh, radiation doesn't stink, obviously. I know that. But uh, is he talking about doing a dirty bomb? You know, they called it a dirty bomb, the stink. You know, is he threatening to do a small tactical nuke, suitcase nuke, in the western part of Ukraine? to, uh, you know, poison that, cause an ecological disaster, uh, keep Poland from coming in there. Could be what he's hinting at. Um, of course, that'd be a horrible thing. Would that invoke Article 5 if uh, the radiation spilled into uh, a NATO country? Could be. I have to see how NATO responds. Um, and then this last quote would be at the bottom there. It says, uh, that will be the final judgment for them on the grain deal. So he said that ecological disaster will be the final judgment from Russia to Ukraine on the Green Deal. So not, none of this is, is good where it's going. If, uh, if both countries, both warring factors are starting to threaten ecological disasters, you know, by blowing up supply lines, leaking oil, jet fuel into the water, hoping it gets, you know, disturbs the Russian uh, populace along the Black Sea there, uh, not good. Then Russia coming back saying, um, you know, we're going to do something that'll stink for centuries. You know, it could be a chemical attack. Uh, could that be what they're looking at? A chemical attack, biological pathogen attack. Those usually don't last for centuries, but, you know, it could be just idle threats. But uh, once again, it's the nuclear option getting thrown out there by Medvedev. Gets thrown out there a lot. Um, one day what happened, maybe. But, you know, we got to keep our eye on it. We got to keep, you know, looking at this stuff because one day it could happen. So... Let's just see what they also do about the United States being involved in targeting. It's been happening this far. Russia's done nothing much. Um, you know, maybe stuff we don't really hear about. Um, you know, maybe some of the things burning down in the United States, some of the railway state. Maybe that's Russia's retaliation. I don't know. It seems too small for what's going on against Russia. But we shall see. Like, like I've said before in a few other videos, I think it's really going to heat up here in August. All the way through the BRICS meeting, you know, August 23rd. Uh, what's going on with that? Um, the fact that you know Ukraine's threatening a huge drone strike on Moscow at the end of August, uh, the ramping up of the attacks on Black Sea. Not sure how that's going to go, but that's why we keep our ear to the ground and head on a swivel. And as you do, you know your chores this weekend, you do your prepping. Just you know, let's keep track of what's going on in that world because one day, you know, we might wake up and see bright flashes in the sky or hear about it over there and then you know it's game on. So until next time, keep your ear to the ground, head on a swivel.